is funny. Fernando de Rojas, La Celestina. Hello and welcome back again. Sancho's arrival causes quite an interruption at the end of chapter one. The voices heard turn out to be those of the niece and the housekeeper who are militant in their defense of Don Quixote's house. The housekeeper insults Sancho, calling him a vagabond and accusing him of leading Don Quixote astray. Sancho responds with equal vitriol, calling her housekeeper of Satan and claiming that it was Don Quixote who led him astray and that he has yet to receive the isle he was promised. If part two is more political than part one, it is also more explicitly focused on economics. Sancho tells the housekeeper that she is off by half the just price, which alludes to the era's hotly debated issue of whether prices should be determined according to the free market or rather according to the calculations of appointed regulators. Did you know? In Cervantes' great novel, we read a detailed representation of the transition between medieval feudalism and early modern bourgeois capitalism. This is why Don Quixote and Sancho Panza are always arguing about the squire's salary. The school of Salamanca generally argued in favor of the free market. Monopolists and certain religious and government officials argued that they should set prices. Ironically, even though Sancho accuses the housekeeper of mispricing his relationship with Don Quixote, he still has corrupt intentions. He hopes for more profit from ruling his island than four court judges. The housekeeper snaps back that he should be content with what he has. Go and govern your own house and work your parcels of land. Here is Cervantes' novel in a nutshell, the contrast between chivalric adventurism and the simple, though apparently difficult, art of managing one's own household. Of what does the housekeeper accuse Sancho? A, eating all the eggs, B, committing blasphemy, C, distracting her master. Correct answer, C, distracting her master. Once they are alone, Don Quixote chastises Sancho for mischaracterizing their relationship during his argument with the housekeeper. He uses medical and anatomical discourse in order to reassert a kind of natural, feudal bond between master and servant. Cervantes underscores this by having Don Quixote begin with a Latin phrase. You are deluded, Sancho, as the saying goes, quanto caput dolet, etc. I mean that when the head aches, all the other members also ache. And seeing as I'm your lord and master, I am your head and you my member, for you are my servant. And for this reason, any evil that touches or might touch me will cause you pain and yours will do the same to me. Sancho's response is brilliant and comical, but it also reestablishes an important tension between our heroes that we saw in part one. Sancho recalls the episode in chapter 17 of part one when he was blanketed for refusing to pay the innkeeper. But when they tossed me in the blanket like a member, my head was behind the fence watching me fly through the air not feeling any pain whatsoever. Don Quixote insists that he felt the squire's pain in a spiritual sense, and then he changes the topic. That's all for now. We will see each other in the next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.